think this was an attempt to try to block off the drains. Well, if this is the coffer dam to close in those five finger drains, that's almost dead center. I know. I'm going to have to get that pump lower once it goes down a little bit. Well, I got boots on here. I can get in. Charles, you see that? Look when you find the big mystery of Oak Island who actually gets to claim slash keep the contents who will it belong to, I think we're all quite excited that it could be the so-called flood tunnel booby trap system. Of course, we're going to investigate. We have to see what it looks like from discovering ceramic ware from the early 1600s to Rick and his team finding multiple ancient coins believed to be part of the hidden treasure. Rick believes that they are one step away from finding the lost treasure of Oak. Island how did they get here let's dive in ceramic ware from the 1600s on lot 5 digging through the unexplored area of lot 5 Rick and the team made a discovery similar to one they had made before but this one was much more complex it seemed lot 5 might actually not be a residential area as they had initially thought but a deposit area with features similar to that of the money pit Rick and his team came across this area while digging through the circular depression marked with stones by the lot's original owner. Robert Young who thought the circular feature had a bit of importance to it digging to expose the top of the rock feature Fiona made an unusual discovery she found broken pieces of red earth were stuck into the ground it was different from the ones they had previously found on top of that it had a purple glaze on the rim and a dark glaze on the interior on further observation the crew found it to be as ancient as the 1600s because of its utilitarian features but la if there's a piece of pottery you don't recognize it's likely to be old right exactly Yale confessed to not having come in contact with such an ancient ceramic artifact throughout his career and where alongside its other uses was pottery used to transport goods and materials in Europe and North America during the 17th and 18th centuries the discovery of the red ware was a clue that despite lot 5 being abandoned for decades there was a well located here before the 1760s when it was a residential area the main goal is to expose the bottom but also to look for the south. Wall after careful digging another ceramic piece was found but this time it was much thicker than the previous one seeing this L identified this piece to be coarse earth and war likely to be much older than the utilitarian one and in a much better condition while these ceramics gave a clue it would be much more difficult to find all the pieces that made it whole and use them to determine the activities that happened on lot 5 for this reason Rick and his team continued with their digging and what they found left them. Surprise die and latch yards near the money pit I think Emma's going to be excited it looks like a latch L while reminiscing about the past and the unexplored findings Gary decided to check the presence of iron using his metal detector from the constant beeping it seemed the circular feature had a lot of iron concentration despite being buried too deep in the ground it looked like the only way to reach the iron artifacts was through continuous digging a year back a huge metal presence was detected in the circular feature. Deciding to investigate the metal hit from the previous year Leah dug through the soil and found metal covered in hardened clay when dusted the object resembled a metal latch for a cellar or a trap oh, it did not seem like a coincidence for ceramic wheeze and a latch to be found in the same area by speculation the circular area was not formed by natural causes but was a deliberate construction made by people maybe even the original depositors of the buried treasure it was as if the circular depression was built to hide something away from other people's suspicion to get more information on the artifact it was taken to the investigative center and according to a report from Emma after conducting a CT scan the image presented was much clearer at first the team thought it to be a door knocker or created to be driven into somewhere it unlocks according to leave his observations point to the artifact being a river raft spike with a high quantity of iron and could have been used for multiple purposes the only thing I found is that it was um was a river raft spike. Additionally its origin definitely dates back to the pre-1840s and when compared with other iron artifacts found on the island and from Sir William Fizz treasure collectors it was not similar to the artifact from the island however it did match directly with the William Phipps artifacts obtained from Frank White an Oak Island story follower and collector of artifacts from William Fizz site when taken to a blacksmithing expert Carmen it was found to be a sort of wedge about four in long and with a ring around it Carmen also stated that there 
INS thickness, indicated that it was quite old and from the image of the CT scan conducted by Emma he stated that the tool was not used repeatedly as compared to those which were and had mushroom heads as proof of how often they had been used on top of that it was used like other wedges for this reason it was likely to be driven into wood or rocks however based on the activities that occurred on the island it was used on wood to bind logs together maybe as a stopper for horses or as a fastener for carts according to Carmen it also most likely was used for directing heavy cargo underground underground the garden shaft a moment that the team had been waiting for the Dumac crew completed their construction of the shaft and put it inside the tunnel before they proceeded to climb down the garden shaft what are we going to do explain to us what we're going to do so we got to excavate a little bit more we got to chip some of the clay right and then we could put another set in okay the chance to explore the garden shaft was a highly anticipated one most like likely since the team started searching for the treasure and getting to do it now makes all the hard work worth it about 87 feet into the tunnel brothers Rick and Marty led Gina alongside Roger Ferran from Duma contracting Lude had experienced an unending shower that came from the soil in the tunnel the infiltration of water looked like it was coming from the right wall of the tunnel at 60 feet and below to stop the leakage Roger planned to make about 9 holes in the wall and put some urethane in it in their expertise this process is very similar to grouting, and should be effective in stopping the flow the urethane would be sprayed under pressure and its drying would seal the holes that caused flooding in the tunnel which was still undergoing construction digging of the holes to drain the water had brought the team closer to the tunnel that ran directly under the garden shaft and toward the baby blob despite not being at its full length the three were at a level that had never been explored by researchers and getting to their target area was seemingly just beyond arms reach aside from the never truly forgotten treasure being out of reach another goal that the team had achieved was the construction of the horizontal shaft the team also had ready reports on the precious materials tested in the waters of the money pit area a meeting was set up in the war room with geoscientist dr ian spooner chemist dr matt lucan and hydrogeologist dr fred michael according to dr lukeman fl fluorescence testing was conducted on the water for evidence of metal and non-metal traces in the water. Fluorescent spectroscopy was used among the multiple boreholes dug in the money pit area with this method of testing L16 had a different result according to Ian the borehole when dug deep enough opened into a large void that is known to the team as Aladdin's cave Aladdin's cave as you deemed it last year so what do we hope to see once we get to the bottom of the whole treasure chest the balloons we want to know whether this cave is natural or whether it's been influenced by people yeah secondarily to that we'd like to see a way in and a way out the borehole was also stated to have a very high quality of gold in the presence of organic materials indicating that there was a wooden structure possibly a tunnel inside it however at that depth the chances of finding wood were close to none at this point in the expedition everyone including those watching the documentation was questioning the activities that resulted in it being possible the obvious thing was that at one point there was human activity in the cave soon enough there Drilling of a new borehole K145, began with a mission to intercept L16 and reach the center of Aladdin's cave once at a reasonable depth. The team planned on dropping a definitive camera into it to have a look at what was going on down there soon after the rod hit a void with a depth of 10 feet of open space and then suddenly would assumed to be the entrance to the tunnel was found using the Spectrum 120 high definition camera. The team journeyed deep below to investigate the hidden areas of the cavern at around 142 feet deep in the cave and with only a few inches of adjustments of the camera a square headed bolt was seen at the top of layers of possible rocks or a lump of sand it is evident that the bolt was not naturally made confirming that indeed activity occurred in Aladdin's cave dropping the camera even further below the full view came into sight and it was discovered why would there be a bolt on the wall perhaps this is some sort of lock to open the real treasure chamber that's piece of debris or something this is a very exciting thing.
and it's important to see whether it's man-made or not I think there's a chance the treasure might be placed the which would answer a lot of questions to get more answers the team agreed on a sonar examination which promised to shed more light on what had been discovered discovery of ancient coins still within lot 5's surrounding area Rick and Gary went on an investigative operation to check out the flag spots and detected a metallic target one of them used the metal detector machine while the other dug through and pulled out a portion of the soil in the marked area soon the metal detector device alerted signs of heavy and solid metal close to the earth's surface after careful digging they soon came across something and found it to be an ancient coin this was a good sign as they searched for the treasure it was indeed a good start as the texture and quality of the coin seemed to be similar to those of the ancient roman coin found within a few feet of the current spot several years ago but that was not the only good sign it seemed the coin was handmade specifically through the hammer soon after the first coin discovery another was made a few away at a flat spot this time around the discovery was much easier and like the first coin this one was also hand hammered this discovery cheered up the team and gave them the motivation to continue digging for clues Rick was quick to call his brother Marty to come down to the area to share in the excitement and also help in the search after several trials Rick made another discovery adding the third coin to the collection found on lot 5 this coin also had a similarity with the two previously found upon deeper examination they realized that the pattern looked the same it was definitely hand hammered and it dated further than the discovery of oak island that is fantastic look at that i thought i saw something that's a coin and another hand hammered one yet yeah, this point the crew believed that the coins definitely were clues to the big picture of what happened on lot 5 taking their findings to lara and emma at the interpret center the coins were analyzed using the XRF and CT scan and after a few minutes the results came back the first coin was analyzed to have about 94% copper and about 5% silver which was different from the properties of Roman coins which were tin and lead this analysis indicated that the first coin was not originally from Rome but it was still very ancient and had no features or properties of modern coins meanwhile the second coin seemed to be made from a different metal after undergoing the XRF its properties were discovered the coin was made up of copper silicon lead and tin a definite match to the ancient Roman coins found in one of their previous expeditions and most likely was brought to the island by Knights Templar or the original treasure depositors while scanning the last coin it seemed like the pattern on it was woven or was a very light and small chain link when discussed among the team it was thought to be made of brass about 95% copper and 5% silver a very rare find with almost no point as to its origin until Emma continued with their scan there was a quantity of brass detected it also had iron and heavy manganese which indicated that it was more modern than the rest of the coins found this report was almost the exact opposite of what was expected especially the obvious part about the coin not being modern it was definitely handmade and the inscribed pattern on it was ancient first look I got grass oh no that's not modern upon a closer look Emma discovered its unexpected uniqueness the coin had brass properties however the high calcium and phosphorus pointed to the coin as a French denier that existed around the 13th century and was similar to the lead cross they had found some time ago this gave rise to another question the team wondered if there was a possible connection between the French denier and the French barter token given they looked to be of the same origin overall these coins were all unique findings and their discovery led to a couple of unanswered questions about what activities occurred on the island was there a possible trade between the two sources or was it a possession of the Knights Templar later in the afternoon on the second day after the first findings the team decided to continue their search for ancient coins in the pink flagged area at lot 5 at first Craig found an R artifact that looked like a broken piece of a map it was bagged for further observation at the interpretive center but that's not all they found that day underneath a pile of debris another coin was found adding forth to the list in just a single zone indeed this was a strong starting point for the team according to the experts the coin has the chance of being roman and like the others also hand hammered for a coin that old it was surprisingly in good shape and the patina was still very clear discovery at oak island swamp to get more clues to the hidden treasure the team decided to investigate the swamp on oak island for pieces of artifacts underwater during the last search near the dam really ancient and important artifacts were discovered along its shore the exploration was carried out with the help of an while the team witnessed 
almost everything underneath from above so we need to get the off in the water and I'm going to get suited up and go get wet Tony dove into the water hoping to find pieces of evidence of man-made artifacts and the operation was a success by fanning crusts and dust settled on the artifacts Tony discovered a piece of wood identified as timber a very crucial find that backs the accuracy of Zena's interpreted map this discovery confirmed the presence of human activity at some point in time in the swamp yet this was just there Beginning after a few moments of searching Tony found another piece of timber about 1 t and 6 in long investigating further an entirely different discovery was made this time he headed straight for a boulder and at the feet of the boulder pieces of white and blue ceramic ware in a clay sailor pipe were found it seems the underwater activities of the swamp likely buried these artifacts this showed the possibility that the swamp was used as a deposit ground and not all treasures were collected during the construction of there. Damn if either of these speculations were accurate then something around found was the source of the artifacts during a circular sweep of the boulder Tony made yet another discovery with the metal detecting device and this time the presence of metal in the spot seemed very high he saw a round shaped artifact with a hole in the middle similar to the Chinese coin they had found earlier Tony also guessed that it might be an ancient disc with similarities to Chinese coins dated around the BC era the coin indicated that the area might be a trading spot or it could be a she wreck there is a possibility that since the dam was built over 700 years ago without modern technology these artifacts might have been put in place to aid its construction despite these findings their search continued what this tells me is there are a heck of a lot of stories going on on this island the largest piece of pottery is found in the circular feature having marty clear the circular feature of big rocks using a tractor the team proceeded to carefully dig through the space the rock once Filled some moments into careful digging Jimmy discovered what could easily be the largest artifact found in the circular feature a very large piece of pottery that could have been a huge part of a hole was found covered in moist soil according to lay it was a coarse earth and war of Anglo-American origin possibly made in England or Pennsylvania the piece most likely is part of a large cooking vessel that was used in the second half of the 1700s most likely in the 1770s an amazing detail was that this piece spray dated the finding of the area. About two decades earlier the piece might have been used by the original dwellers of the island the people who constructed the circular feature or by someone most likely a searcher who found the artifact and buried it in the feature to be later recovered the possibilities were endless and having a definite idea of its origin was possible but difficult the only hope was to wait for the analysis report at the interpretive center building artifacts found in the circular feature at this point Jack and Helen sifted through there debris of the circular feature and a few minutes into searching for artifacts Helen noticed traces of pipe stem in the debris the spoils however did not meet the expectation of recovering lots of nails which she thought to be a good indicator of the structure beneath the circular area to be a log cabin a few moments later Jack found a nail that seemed to belong to a building frame and just like that there was a possibility of discovering several other nails like it Jimmy still digging into the circular feature also made a fairly large Says. Discovery the artifact seemed to be some kind of metal fastener that was a bit different from the previously found fasteners it seemed to be a strap hinge for a door with a part of it missing surprisingly the remains of the fastener were found immediately after Jamie found a large nail that could have been used to hold the fasteners to a wooden surface the nail also had a unique feature it had a rose spiked head and looked visibly used it was bent hand rot and the head was hammered on four sides based on its features it seemed to have been made during the 1600s which was before the discovery of the money pit area the team agreed to test it to see if it matches Oak Island's original treasure depositor Sir William Fizz timeline on top of that Helen also stated that based on the location of the artifacts if other metal pieces were to be found the area was possibly the window side of the building with all these clues and artifacts the crew was positive that they were on the right path to uncovering the hidden treasure they invested so much time in finding.